we really wanted to restore this lake and sort of the crux of the whole project is this the presence of these invasive fish that were sort of keeping it in this unhealthy state. A variety of non-native species were introduced into the lake throughout its urbanization history. The primary one is the common carp, sort of the cockroaches of freshwater ecosystems. They get in there and they grub up all of the habitat, so the submerged vegetation the foundation of the ecosystem. The carp are grubbing them up, trying to find the small invertebrates that are living in the vegetation. So not only are they destroying the habitat, but they're also consistently increasing the turbidity, which creates murky waters, always of shading out light. And at some point in Mountain Lakes history, the submerged vegetation, which we know that diversity was very high, went extinct in Mountain Lake. And you could tie it right back to the carp and their grubbing behavior. the success or failure of this project, it really lies in the establishment of submerged aquatic vegetation. So in order to reestablish submerged aquatic vegetation, those non-native fish have to be completely removed. The second species of concern that was in there was the largemouth bass, which are predatory species and those are directly linked to the extirpation of a lot of the amphibian species, such as frogs and newts. Those fish would have just gobbled them up immediately. For the first two years of my role here, I was using mechanical methods, so primarily netting. A lot of gill nets were used. All different types of humane ways to capture fish and to relocate them to Sonoma County. We weren't really sure of the number of fish, but we knew that they were astronomically high. Over the course of about two years, I managed to net about 70 individual adults of those species, 80% carp, 20% bass. And the juveniles, the young of the year, the about inch long ones, we removed probably roughly between 10,000 and 20,000, which sounds like a lot, but that was probably just the tip of the iceberg. Keep in mind, one female carp can lay up to two million eggs per season, so the numbers weren't stacking up. And I just want to preface that these fish, primarily the carp, it's an issue globally, a global issue, and many, many people are scrambling all over to try to figure out how do you restore ecosystems and even fisheries, like the economy of, of native fish species, in the presence of these fish. And really, the only way to do it successfully, 100% eradication, is through a toxicant called rotenone. And that comes from the bean family, the roots of bean plants, and it's been used for centuries and centuries by folks all around the world to harvest and eat fish. So the rotenone was applied in a liquid form throughout the lakes and it's almost immediately effective as it starts to mix throughout the water column, the fish start to come up to the surface. So what it does is it targets gilled organisms, so fish and invertebrates. It's absorbed through the gills and it eradicates them and you can do it with 100% efficiency as opposed to the mechanical methods like netting. Collecting these fish took about three days and we ultimately removed about over a ton of fish, so over 2,000 pounds of fish and around 500 individual adults. So the removal of the non-native fish, the predators and the habitat degraders allowed us to talk about the reintroduction of the native fish, the three-spined stickleback, which based on museum records is the only native fish species that was present in Mountain Lake. One Creek, Lobos Creek, historically connected to Mountain Lake. So we ultimately chose Lobos Creek as the source population to grab the stickleback from, which would have been the historic population going into Mountain Lake. 